Hey guys, what's going on? What, is, what kind of entrance is that? I know, I was like, trying to a fictional I'm character type of thing. I was like, what am I going to say? Good. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking in. Good morning. So another Friday another, episode. Another with episode. With I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't starting already you. with this? No, go ahead. Another Friday episode with the Coffee Breakout. Thank you so much for joining us. With Marvin Schultz and <laughs> Christian Vieira. Oh, snap out of hey, it, bro. Hey, What's up with you? No, I'm good. Let's do it. All righty. So before we begin, as always, like this video. Uh, smash that like button on YouTube. Subscribe. Subscribe. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. That's on social media platforms. And if you're watching us on, on YouTube, YouTube, great. If you can't, you're on the run. Feel free to listen to us on our streaming platforms, which are uh, Spotify, iTunes, and that's all that that's matters. Yeah, the yeah. rest of them kind of suck. Oh, yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah. So please, if you can follow us, engage. The most important thing is creating the conversation and creating those uncomfortable moments Absolutely. where you think that mm, I'm the only one that's going through this. But no, there's a lot of relatable uh, things that are happening to many people. So we need to talk about them. So create that engagement in the comment section. And if you can't DM us and we'll reach out to get you those answers to create those conversations. Open that dialogue. So, Marvin, yes, lead us off. Let me take it away. Very special episode. Uh, we have a guest on, Very Dr. Special. David Hernandez. Is that right? What's up? What's up? So, Thank at Miami, so at Miami Love Doctor, um, good following on social media. This guy, I remember I followed you back when you had like 3,000 followers. Like, you were like, you had just started. I was like, man, this is awesome content. Yeah, like, when we about. had the podcast yeah, coming yeah. up, I want to have this guy on. You told me about it. That is the day. He was very excited about you since big if they won and so we obviously had to get you on and thank you for coming on well i'm glad to be here i'm glad to be here he started following me when i was just starting social media and one thing led to the other i did a co i had a couple of bi big influencers come in as patients mm. they posted me and nice I that's it so yeah so let's go back to t talk to us about who are you what is it that you do where are you from the whole, the whole yeah we always start by getting to know who our guest is not Please. just us but also the people who are going to be viewing over there and also when we put the episode out so tell us everything about who you are what it is uh, that you do how'd you start how'd everything you know you were telling us a little bit before about your dad yeah so, so we can go into all of that so i come from a pretty humble upbringing here in little havana you know <laughs> I'm a hood rat. Yeah. yeah. Um, my dad worked hardware. My mom was a manicurist all my life. And basically graduated high school, became a paramedic, okay. you know. Where'd you, where'd you go to high school? Uh, Champagne, private Yo! school. Where is that? I've heard of them. That's in Hialeah, right? No, I went to the Miami campus. It's oh, even smaller. No way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you were born in, in Miami? Or? Born and raised in Miami. And yeah. your family? My dad is from Cuba. Okay. And so is my mom. They came in the 60s, though. Oh, wow. Met, okay. They met here. Yeah, yeah. So how long you've been? Okay, so you were became a para paramedic. Yeah, you were a paramedic, and then and how did you? Uh, yeah, like in ninety seven, ninety eight, right oh. out of high school. Okay. Uh, I went to EMS school, Miami Dade North, North Campus. Uh huh. Uh, became a paramedic and um, started working at a uh, AMR, the ambulance company. Oh uh, yeah, I've seen them. I've heard of. Yeah, I've seen those. So. That sucked. I was making like eight <laughs> bucks an hour. Yeah. Or, or 12 bucks an hour. Oh, something like that. okay. Yeah, that, that, that's, I maxed out at 12. Okay. Uh, wow. I quit that. I started working at Jackson Memorial. Uh, doing what? As a, a paramedic in the ER. Mm, okay. So starting IVs, you know. Cool. And I started making good friends with the doctors there. And I was suturing and I would um, intubate people. And, okay. And they were like, bro, you know this. You got this. And. A friend of mine there, a doctor friend of mine from there, actually paid for my books for my first year of medical school. No way. Really? That's yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Damn, you got hooked up. I yeah. got hooked up. Yeah, pretty good. So I went to study medicine in Dominican Republic. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, 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 a lot yeah. of people do that. Do that where'd you go? Unibe. So I guess because of finances or are you... And well, well I went on U.S. federal loans. So oh, and it worked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, so, I had no idea. So I had to do the same test that anybody does when they come... Okay. From the residency, you yeah. had to do the, the so boards. I stayed over there for a long time. I was in the ER till from 2002 to 2011. And I did surgery over there. And then I came back and just did what I needed to do. And you did to, surgery and everything. Yeah. So what, what kind of doctor were you, were you starting to be? Like, I don't I, know. I wanted, to, I wanted to be a hand specialist. Mm. Okay. Why hands? It was microsurgery. I liked the... Uh, oh, wow. Small, yeah. surgical, yeah. invasive. And then... When I was doing the specialty for hand surgery, uh -huh. one of my professors, 
he was a plastic surgeon. Uh-huh. And we started working together. Cool, okay, cool, cool. So I started doing like boob jobs and butt lifts no and okay. lipo. And we were making really good money. Cool. So in DR. This was in the DR. DR. Cool. We, would, we were advertising in the U.S. and patients. And fly fly out. Oh, I know a lot of people do that. Not Yeah. yeah and then partnership, you know, my partner got greedy. We split ways. I yeah. picked up the little money I had left and I came Back to the U.S. Okay. When was this? If you don't mind me asking. In 2011. Okay. December, 2010. December 2010. How'd you go from doing surgery over there to then transitioning to where you're doing okay, now? Okay, so I got here in 2010 and I started working as a surgical assistant in Coral Gables Hospital. Surgical assistant. As I studied for my boards. And yeah, I, yeah, yeah. In 20, I say 2015 is when I started working for, well, I started working for an anti-aging clinic. Perfect. We'll uh, go from there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Started working for an anti-aging clinic in Aventura. And um, the medical team was given the task of creating a new product to offer their clients. And okay. basically, the medical director um, and myself and a PA, we worked together and we, we looked into shockwave therapy. And then we started training doctors. It took off, you know, obviously for sexual health. Um, the way it took off is we basically put a banner in our lobby saying, ask about your free gains wave today. <laughs> and, you know, about 80% of the patients that tried a, uh, a free s- treatment bought a six pack. So mm. they were like, oh shit, we have something. And they added it to the website and we were starting to get patients flying from everywhere. We couldn't handle the patient load. The volume, yeah. Yeah, right. believe it or not. So, what we did is we started training doctors. Mm. And then 468 doctors later, um, I stepped away. I walked away from the company. Why is that? Yeah. Well, so I walked away from the company and I've been training, still training doctors in Alabama. I'm by 600 and something doctors trained. It's amazing. And um, in sexual health and aesthetics is what I train them on. And... Um, and here I am today. Actually, flew in on Sunday from Alab- Alabama. Ten, Alabama, ten doctors. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So my question is shockwave therapy. What is it? Yeah, I you have, mentioned yeah, that. Yeah. yeah I mean, okay. we're going to be going into questions later, but, but yeah. you mentioned it already. So yeah, let's, 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 let's get dive into in. it. Let's get into it because that's that's my bread and butter. That's what I teach. That's what I do. Let's do it. So it's sound wave therapy. Actually, shockwave. It's um, the same sound that thunder emits. Okay. okay. So what it basically does. These sound waves go into your penis, if that's the area being treated, mm-hmm. and they create "quote unquote" pseudo trauma. They open up the cell without damaging it, so your brain interprets this as an injury, and repair, repair, blood. repair, 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 ah. repair. Sends growth factors to the area. I'm a doctor. Growth <laughs> factors doesn't mean it's gonna make it grow. <laughs> I'd be very, very rich. I like make anybody's <laughs> yeah, penis. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> Set. And I'd be walking around with a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, no, but um, so basically, since growth factors, you get new blood vessels, new nerves, you know, um, new collagen. That's so great. Better elasticity. Okay. So all in all, complete rejuvenation of your penis. And that helps with erections to get so, it, runs so it, helps, it helps with erections. It helps with sensitivity. So it makes it more sensitive. And I know everybody. Oh, I don't want it more sensitive. I'm, I'm going to finish faster. No, it means you're going to finish harder. So mm. it's that toe curling orgasm again. Really? Yeah, Jesus. So, what a sign so, up. Huh? So <laughs> better erections, easier to go into round two. You know, because okay. your stamina comes back. Right, right, right. So um, all in all, it's great, bro. So you've been doing this since what 2015. 15. Yeah, yeah. But you didn't did you perfection this? Perfect yeah, this? I changed it. Well, you changed it. Okay. So I combined it now. <clears throat> I do the treatments. I give my patients a penis pump and I call it, you know, it's like an exercise, it's like yoga for your penis. Mm-hmm. So you're basically pumping without having to have an erection. You're pulling, you know, oxygenated blood into the penis and letting it go back out so you get it. An exercise. Um, okay. And um, in a supplement, which I'm coming out with right now, I'm 
doing one that I helped create that I get no money for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a sucker. But Do they put your face on the on the no, bottle? No, ah, God. God. No, but my, I'm holding the penis puppy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And, and what, what are the vitamins supposed to do? So it's just so supposed it's to a nitric oxide booster. Ah, well, okay. Yeah, I think you also Maybe, talked about it. Those yeah, are all the videos. Yeah, 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 a lot of people they do that when it comes to the gym, just so they can get a better exactly. pump and stuff oh, like that. Okay. Yeah. I have a friend of mine that actually a doctor that prescribes Cialis in gummies just, uh-huh. for for gym rats. Yeah, just so they can get that extra pump, the veins and really? the extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of hard. I've to heard of that. Out with a heart on. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I can't even ride the bike. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of that, but that's oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So shockwave therapy, that's like your bread and butter, but you also do other forms yeah, of treatments. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right now, I'm putting together. Right now, I have what's basically getting me through this whole pandemic is I've been doing IVs a lot, mm-hmm. and that's what also grew my social media because I've been doing IVs a lot um, to within a circle of of popular people. Um, and when you say IVs, what do you mean? They could just yeah. like immune boost IVs. I have a, oh. a menu now. I came. I have pre workout, post workout. Um, Mayo enhancement, um, beauty, and uh, immune boost. So this is, this is like I'm sorry. This is yeah. like a solution or like a formula like that they'll go. Like yeah, yeah. But it's specific for that where yeah. they go and, and then I have a hangover one as well. Yeah, the hang- I was just gonna ask because yeah. they have those in like Vegas, right? They're yeah. driving like those buses and they're like, hey, get an IV. They have them here, man. Me too. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen them. Okay. So that's what. Yeah, but oh, I do. Cool. I I do it more concertedly, like VIP to your house. Nobody needs to know. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Interesting. Oh, okay. God. Take us through a day in the life of the Mahmi Love Doctor. So, and let's say you have a very, I don't want to say standard, but, you know, you know, talk about a day, you know, of what you would do, how you would do it, you know, how you treat the customer, stuff like that. So, so, um, basically what I learned, and this I have a lot to appreciate to that company I worked for in Aventura, is I got um, used to treating high-end clients. So it's, I, I, I offer like a white glove service you know um and privacy is you number know one yeah number one for these patients yeah. um which always questions always leaves me in question my name because you know a lot of people don't want to be so much associated with me because oh miami love doctor he's always talking about problems with sex and this and that if i follow him they could think i have problems with sex really so yeah and i can see that that's why i left my 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 pages public I, I get more hits on my page and profile visits than you would believe. No, I can imagine. I can imagine. If all those people stayed, I'd have like a hundred k followers by now. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh man, yeah. You could yeah, be yeah. careful with those. I get a lot of a lot of profile visits. Um, but well, um, so a day in my life, I've treated over six thousand patients. So you know. Yeah, take us like you know a day that you had I, a. I got to the point where I didn't want to even see my penis anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I would pee looking up at the ceiling <laughs> just to avoid the contact, <laughs> the, the eye contact. I'll show up at home and tell my wife, "Show me a titty, show me something, please." <laughs> yeah, change it up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um, it depends. So the the treatments, you know, they're not in, inexpensive. So mm-hmm. I have like a set. Um, customer base okay. and I have a lot of VIP patients that have been patients with me for a long time already and so it, it's basically checking my schedule see who I have that day for in terms of sexual health okay. and then I would I usually schedule all me, my other patients around my sexual health guys so, or girls so you have like regulars almost yeah like, yeah, okay. yeah I have regulars oh, regulars okay uh, um, and female regulars as well Sure, of course. You know, um, so that's that's my day. Basically, it's jumping from the clinics. I, I visit three clinics, two in Doral, one in North Miami, and um, they set up the patients for me when they're not my personal patients. That so if they get patients through leads or they sell it to their own customers. I go give my service, take my cut, and I'm out. You know. Um, but the average guy needs anywhere from six to twelve treatments, depending on the severity of their issues. And this is for what shockwave? The for shockwave, shockwave um, it's once a week, and that's usually okay. depending when their appointment date is. How many patients I have that week? That's usually uh, yeah. How much would like a package like that cost? So anywhere from twenty five hundred to three grand. 
Okay. For the whole for, entire for the treatment. For, the, yeah, yeah. for all six treatments. Okay. Yeah. And then you also said, you know, that you also treat women or you also, uh, how what, is this with the same therapy? So, yeah. So, Shockwave has, Shockwave therapy, when it comes to ED, mm-hmm. like erectile dysfunction, has over 51 clinical studies, right? There's no clinical studies for females. Mm-hmm. But if you put a 12-week um, old fetus, penis and vagina, Next to each other, they're identical. Yeah, yeah. Same erectile tissue, everything is identical. If you put a penis and a clitoris next to each other, they look like two people walking hand in hand because they're identical. Right. Just the size of fetus, the though. No, no, this is grown. Oh. Adult penis and adult clitoris side by side, and it's completely identical. Glands, Corpus mm. carinosum, the crua, yeah, everything is the same. Really? Yeah. Used to me, never heard of that. Yeah. So, so then, would the so benefit? basically the clitoris is the baby dick. R- so that's what I was <laughs> gonna. Yeah. I know you wanted me to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was gonna pry it out of you, yeah. anyways. <laughs> so then, pretty much whatever stimulation for the man, in this case for the penis, it would just go straight to the to no. the clit, and then that would also help them with um the pleasure and the satisfaction and the orgasms exactly. as well. I would assume. Exactly. Fascinating. So you have do we have more female clients or patients? I would say than or than men or how does that? What do you think? It's usually more guys, females. Are a little bit more difficult to to, um, to like reluctant to like open up to them. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, I would think it would be like maybe the opposite way. No. So um, females are more open to hormone replacement. Ah, okay. And once they know that you do that, and you gain a rapport with them, then they have no problem. He's into it. Okay. Or they come. They'll come in for aesthetics and then see. Oh, what's the O shot? I see the banner. The O shot is PRP, platelet rich plasma. For your G spot and your clitoris for better orgasms, and is that temporary or is that like uh, it? It lasts about six to six months to a year. Yeah, you gotta wow. come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you do that, and also like I saw on your on your page, vampire facial and facelift. Yeah, yeah, facelift. So, yeah, so it's it's those are brand names. This guy Charles Reynolds, <laughs> Doctor Charles Reynolds, out of um, Alabama, he was the first guy to basically go crazy enough and inject his own penis. With PRP, and mm-hmm. that's the famous P shot or Priapus shot. I saw that. Right? So Charles Reynolds invented that. And then after he injected his own penis, he started, inject, you know, selling it. He was like, hey, it doesn't hurt. It's not going to do nothing. It actually helps. And he started doing it. To, and there's a study that came out of Japan that says that PRP, if you get a P shot and you combine it with um, a vacuum pump use, you could actually gain size and girth. Really? Do you think that's safe, though? Yeah, yeah, because it's autologous. It's your own blood okay. going back into your own body. So basically, shockwave therapy will make your body send the growth factors to the area with PRP. I'm basically harvesting those growth factors and putting them directly in your penis. Okay, interesting. It's so fascinating. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds horrible. Yeah, that, it does your, sound unpleasant. It, you don't feel it, man. Yeah. You don't feel it, I promise you. I've done everything to myself that I do to my patients, so yeah. okay, so you can vouch for it. <laughs> Alrighty, so um, so we got a little to know a little bit about you. So obviously, yeah. you know, we always transition into getting to know about your relationship and you know whether whatever history you have, and obviously you're married. So yeah. if we can dive into that, you know, obviously with your your role or your your career, is that anything that's you know impacted yeah. your your marriage or you've made it even better? Yeah, it's made it better. It's made it. So me and my wife met when I was in DR. Was she studying over there too? No, no, no. She She's was actually, I was friends with her dads. So okay, okay. So very few Cubans in DR. Okay, right. So there was this little hangout place that the Cubans would uh, get together to play dominoes and all this and that. And I met her dad. We became friends. We were drinking buddies. You know, we go out and party. Cool guy. Um, and then one day. He shows me pictures of his daughters that were coming from Cuba to DR, and I was wow. like, "And I was like, oh, you're Twitter Suero Mio, you know, you're my new father-in-law." He's like, "Nah, my daughter's not gonna pay attention to you, you know. She's a model in Cuba, isn't that?" <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right, all right, all right. And then she came. They came over, and one one thing led to the other. Me and his daughter hooked up, and we've been together ever since. Yeah. Fifteen years, 15 is that correct? Years, yeah. Wow. Okay. That's awesome. Since 05. Since 05. 
Okay. And so what does what does she do? If you don't mind me asking. Um, she's basically she runs my company. Really? Okay. Oh. So you guys work together. Yeah, she's what holds me together, bro. She like that. she takes care of my money. You know, she takes care of me. Um, she makes sure. Uh, you remember I told you that I work in three different clinics. You mentioned it. She Miami makes sure Durant, everybody too. pays. Right. <laughs> she makes her, make sure. I don't function. She keeps me working. Line, yeah, that's the bloodline. Yeah, awesome. if 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 it were up to me, I have zero money. I wow. like expensive stuff. Yeah. Fair enough. And and she keeps me in check. So um, I wanted to dive a little bit into you know obviously with your relationship in within your marriage. So I mean, just for people because you know we, we talk about dating and, and relationships and stuff like that. And some people they think that oh no one else is going through what I'm doing. So obviously you being married for you know a couple years and stuff like that. What are like some ups and downs that you've experienced, but then you've also overcame and how did you overcome? So, you know, I wasn't, like I said, I was brought up here in Little Havana, Cuban dad, a player, old school player. Well, what was the saying? You said yeah. it before we started. Yeah. Say it again. So, so nobody should follow this and don't, nobody should judge my dad. <laughs> this is the way he lived his life. But my dad... You know, when I was like 16, 17, 15, you hear this all the time at your house. My dad would say that, you know, guys were put in this earth to conquer as much pussy as they can conquer until the world. they die. So um, that's my dad being the old school pimp he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not like that. Full disclosure. Yeah, for, yeah. <laughs> Full disclosure. I'll sign off on that. <laughs> no, but I'm not like that. But, um, that was my upbringing, you know, and and I I I came up like that. I came up, you know, basically doing that, yeah, living the life, enjoying the the hitting single. Hitting that move, yeah. Basically. Oh, hey, I know, so, I know a couple so, of people like so, that. So, yeah, I really hit anything that move. Yeah, you put if you could put a skirt uh, skirt on a pencil sharpener, you'll probably do it too. I, I come off with a sharp dick. I gotta tell you, <laughs> <that. Hey. laughs> my dad, my dad, my dad also used to say, hey, you know. He who hits good pussy and ugly pussy fucks yeah. more. There you go. That's like a saying? Yeah. yeah it's a, the, he who so, eats bad and eats good eats twice. <laughs> he told me this once. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's so funny. usually usually when my, my boys, when I was in high school, my boys were trying to hit on the pretty girls that weren't doing nothing. I was the one hitting the yeah. fat chick in the court. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. tearing yeah. it up. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh so, man! As long as you get it. So, uh, I, yeah, I had no love. So I was brought up like that. So, um, what changed? All right. Mm -hmm. So I, I got married my first time at okay. twenty. Oh, oh, you've been married before. Okay. Yeah. Twenty. Oh. At twenty, I got married. I thought I lived enough. Yeah. And then, um, at twenty two, twenty one, almost right before I turned twenty one, I had. My daughter, my first daughter, she's 20 now. Okay. Then I went to medical school. Okay. At 22. So you had a daughter, and then, then you went to, then you went to school. Yeah, right. they went over there. My daughter was allergic to living in Miami and being born here. Allergic <laughs> to mosquito bites. Oh. No. So she had to come back to Miami and I was in a third world country with American dollars on my own. And living the dream. Yeah, no. That took care of that marriage. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, you were young still. Yeah, yeah, I was a kid. I was a kid, and then I got lucky enough, and um, I met my my current wife. And so, how old are you when you met her? Then twenty six. Okay, you're a little bit older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens, man. It's just if, if if I could give anybody advice on this, would be make sure you know who you're married. Mm. How long did you know her before you before you? Her. You guys are kill me. You guys are kill we've me. Heard, we've, no, heard we've heard pretty bad things. Yeah. You guys are kill me. Right, let me, let me guess. Let me guess. No, right. no, no. I don't even want you to guess because if, if you're over or under, I, I want to be shocked by your answer. Okay. G guess in your head. Three months, bro. I was going to say three months. Really? I was going to say three months, bro. I feel like that's like for a lot of people. It's like three, three months. months like, oh, three months. Like, and and yes. it was crazy. It's just, <laughs> you know what happened? You know what happened? You know what happened? And, and my current wife, my wife, she hit the nail in the head. She said, you would have married anybody. Mm, I, yeah, was, true. I worked, w when that happened, when I got married, I was still working for AMR, for the ambulance company. Uh -huh. I worked from 2, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., right? Mm -hmm. So I, I would go to work, get home at 7, eat a steak, and go out partying with my friends. 
every single night. And this was when you were like in your early 20s, right? Yeah, I was, I was 19, 18, yeah, I was 19. 19. Living in Miami, right? I was at South Beach all the time. <laughs> I was, back then, it was, um, I forgot the name. I can't even remember, bro. Where they used to throw the phone parties in the beach. What is it called? Amnesia? Oh, wait. Was it immediate? Yeah, glow? No. no, 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 no. This was yeah, something else. Yeah, no, in St. Croix, remember. In, in, in the Grove. Right, 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 right. It was yeah, a different era. Yeah, 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 yeah. it was yeah. different. Okay. We're talking 99, uh, 2000, bro. Oh, I was sure. born in 92, so. I used to go to Club Iguanas when DJ. I've heard of that, I've heard of that. DJ, oh, my God. DJ Laz used to throw the thong Thursdays. Yeah, oh, DJ Laz. They, they would always announce it on, on Power 96. I remember back in the day. So. Okay, so you got married quick, obviously. It was, a mis- it was just to settle down. I right. needed to settle down. I was burnt out, bro. So it was, uh, you, it you was felt a mistake. Like I should have had a relationship before. Do you right. do you regret though? Because I feel like you probably learned a lot about yourself jumping into that. And you know that you I don't recommend it though. No, right. I mean, no, yeah. no one's gonna say you'll get married after three months. You know, yeah. Let, let me get married now so I learn a lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no one's gonna say. No one's gonna say a, you could have learned the same lesson. <laughs> yeah, different way. A whole different yeah. way. Man. A whole different way. Yeah, but you know, you guys have a daughter from it. You could, you could have a good relationship, relationship, not get married and then break up. And you'll learn the same lesson. Absolutely. Without having to pay child support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. And so now that you're always then you got married again years later. It's 15 years later. 15 years. Yeah. And, and what was like. That's my soulmate, dude. So yeah, were you yeah. scared to go back into a second marriage? Because a lot of people have that reluctance. I, I never want to get married no, again. I knew it right away. Did, what about so did it take, one? what, two months to get married? No, no. Oh, no, okay. no, no. We were you knew it right away. I was like, yeah, ah, yeah. let's do it. No, no, no. But I knew right away. This, this, like when you met her. When I met her. This girl, it was different. It, it was, was different. Like, yeah, the it's whole like a different spark, feeling, yeah, right? Like yeah. it's this energy inside you that you're like, ah, oh, this it's is a different. The one. Yeah, it, it was different. It was the like conversations. That. Well, the other day I took her to to a store. I'm not gonna even say it's that's fine. Sure. To yeah. get to buy some jewelry for her, and the lady was like, "Oh, you guys are like new couple," and we're like, "No, we've been together for 15 years." That's She's awesome. Like, nah. So because yeah, yeah, you yeah. guys still have that like the fresh, fire, uh, yeah, fire, yeah, yeah. The energy. Like we're, we're, yeah, it's like we awesome. just started. So what what is the secret? You, if somebody's like, hey, asking, Bro, calling in, wondering, it's bullcrap that your wife needs to be your best. Your wife needs to become your best friend, but you you can't marry your best friend. Okay, uh, so that's what. So when they're your best friend. At the time, then you shouldn't marry them because they're already well, your best friend. You're in the Marvel. We can't no, get married. No, no, sorry, no, 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 such a what shame. I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is. People think that, oh, no, I'm going to get married because not only are you my wife and my girlfriend, but you're my best friend. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's, you confuse, oh, you're my best friend with... um, Like my soulmate or something? No. um, La costumbre. How do you say it? La costumbre. The habit. Mm. It becomes a habit instead of a relationship. The difference is that we still have that spark, like every day is a new day. And that's the way you need to take your relationship. Love that. Not like, oh, we're best friends. Everything's cool. We fight one day and we'll make up the next day. No, you make up that day. That's another thing. Never go to bed angry. I've heard that. that I've heard that too. Yeah. And, and the reason why sex is so important in a relationship, because that makes any fight better. <laughs> Bro, okay. I'm serious. But do you mean because of the, the makeup? There's, there's, there's couples that have lasted forever because the makeup sex. But do you think that's yeah. healthy? Though? But exactly it's not because, healthy. because then that it's not healthy, no, but it's no. important in a healthy relationship. It's important in a healthy relationship. Keep a, just look at it this way: All right. if it could keep an unhealthy relationship together for X amount of years, what can it do for a healthy relationship? But some people might confuse it. They're like, oh my God, this relationship is so great. And then all, when in all it really is, it's just great sex. And that kind of covers over all the other imperfections. Yeah, that's that's so you have to be aware of that. Yeah, it's yeah. easy to get that tangled up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we've, had, we've had people say that. It's like, you know, some people be like, oh my God, sex with my ex was so good. But it's like, that's because that's probably that's all, all you had. Yeah, yeah, so that's all you can relate with. If yeah. the relationship was shitty and the sex was great because that's yeah. the only highlight of the relationship, that's all you're going to hold on to. The bad thing is then she has a bad comparisons. For whatever comes up, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you, she'll meet a great guy that satisfies everything, but and since sex, sex is, it's probably still good, but compared to everything else, you know, it's you don't realize that. So you think bad sex is like a deal breaker in a relationship? What? Oh. To a certain extent, maybe. It's sh- but you can get better at it, right? Well, you could. It, bad sex. Com- I say bad sex communication. Mm. Ah, bad communication is the deal breaker. 
Because like, how can she expect you to be great in bed for her if you have no idea what she likes? Bad communication for sure. Right? Yeah, we've talked about this a little bit in the past. We've had an episode where we kind of touched up on that. So I think when somebody is getting to know somebody they're thinking about dating or going into a relationship with, I think um, sex should be one of the conversations. Like, like a preliminary conversation? Uh, yeah, something like, uh, you know, it should be open because it's a big part of any relationship. It should be like, yo... You know, um, what do you like during intercourse? What don't you like? I say this, yeah, I say this all the time. Like, it's like, it's important. If you can't have that discussion, then you're not ready to take that extra step to have sex with this person. Exactly. So it's like, especially yeah. now, we're not kids anymore. I'm sorry. No, no, okay. yeah, yeah. You said it once before that it's like, if you're not comfortable to talk about it, you shouldn't have sex with that person. Exactly. You, know, you have to be comfortable with yourself in order to be able to have those conversations exactly. and learn about yourself and be able to unravel and discover. No, what and, know, like and, know, and, and know each other's background. For example... I come from a background, like I said, from my dad, that um, his opinion was for a man and a woman in a room, once that door is closed, you know, well, it, everything goes, everything goes, well, you're, you're with your girl. Nobody right. should know if it happens between you and your girl, it happened between you and your girl. I think that's pretty cool. like that. I have some questions. The only person, the, the only person in there that can judge you was the person in that room with you, was with you True. Yeah. who did whatever that you know with you whatever happened so yeah. what do you feel like like some tips that some people could use in order to kind of open up that discussion in a in a, in a proper way i guess I you, just, you just got to be comfortable enough to just say it so right? have, exactly you just got to grow a pair of balls or, or a pair of ovaries <laughs> say hey I f yeah, I was, I was reading somewhere that uh, the, the conversations that are uncomfortable to have are probably the ones that are worth ha to worth be having. having. Yeah, worth having. So yeah, that yeah. kind of triggers that as well. Most definitely. Absolutely. Like yeah, definitely. I tell people all the time because when they reach out to me and they're like, oh, I don't know how to address this. Like, listen, uncomfortable, you, like, you got to get comfortable getting uncomfortable. You, have, yeah. you get you have tied be, up yeah. with your own ego or your mind or like, what are they going to think? Well, you how are they going to react? It's like, if you're concerned about their, their answer, Maybe that's not someone that you should be comfortable enough to, to talk to them or do anything with them. You have no idea how many relationships I've saved in, in terms of sex because the guy starts having erectile issues and he never tells his wife. Mm. So, so she, feels, she feels like it's him, it's, it's her? Exactly. The and woman, when, when it's a stable relationship, the wife or the woman in, in this case will always blame herself. She'll say, oh, he's not attracted to me anymore. We've been together so long. He's he doesn't he's, he's, like yeah, it anymore. He's into you know, somebody else and all oh, that kind of stuff. But the guy never tells him. So he starts taking Viagra Cialis and, um, you know, trying to use all these aids to try to help him. And it's just sinking him deeper and deeper. Before, When he could have just told her, listen, I have this problem. Let's look for help. Let's take care of it. It's not you, et cetera. But do you think that maybe he, like, the if you were to admit that to his woman, that he would feel, like, less of a man? Yeah, like, so she suppose she wouldn't want to be with him because it's like, oh, like, no, you have a dick problem like, and then look for somebody else yeah. who doesn't have it. Then. No, right. no, not if not if it's a, it's a relationship and you guys are married. You know? That's true. That wouldn't happen like that. That's true. But so you already you you do, like, therapy as well, right? Is that something? Because you like, like, touch sex a like, little bit? Yeah. It has it has a lot to do with it because you know in terms of the conversation in the room. Yeah, it's just I'm having like the communication between both partners sexually. Yeah, yeah no, no. But he's asking. I'm asking me about like, you've done it. Yeah, no, like if he's like, like a, a, like a psychologist therapy. or something. No, no, no. So when I'm doing the treatments on, the, I usually do. You dive into it a little bit. Have yeah, that I discussion. Okay, that's well, what. Well, the guy will tell you. You know. Okay, that's what. You know, the first day is the most uncomfortable day. The first treatment because you're gonna have right the guy do, yeah. give you a treatment, but after that. You know, your best buddies because you, you just see, had yeah. my drinking hand. Oh, my God. He's telling you naked. Yeah. So, he, yeah. So, and all the guys say the same thing, you know. This is the coldest room I've ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because then it's like, nah, it's, it's usually bigger when it's hot. <laughs> it's like, nah, son. This is it. Work away, you got. All right. Now it's the fun part of the session where we usually ask the questions. Well, every part is a fun part. Yeah, this is the this extra is, fun. This is where fun. you can have a little bit of fun to really dive into the That's questions. like the doctor that tells you before he does something, he's going, oh, this is going to hurt a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll tell you. You're ready for the pain. Yeah. Hey, prepare yourself. <laughs> All right. No. So question time. And if you have any questions for us, I mean, you, you can. I didn't really tell you, but I mean, if you did, you could. If not, <laughs> the lights the no, on you. good, man. I'm glad. I'm glad. Spotlight's on you. So then I'm going to leave this over here. I'm going to ask quick questions that I have here that I can read and then we're going to dive in over here. Cool. Let's do it. Do it. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. So somebody asked, um, would you say in a relationship you learn to be better in sex with communication, what you like, what you don't like, what's changed? I agree. 
So absolutely. Yeah, so obviously, that, that was a statement, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's got. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. They just wrote it, and yeah, then I agree. I agree. And then 100%. they also said, hooking up with people doesn't give you the chance to improve without feedback. That's true. Oh, like one night stands, maybe like just casual yeah, sex. I think somebody else had. But also that, said that's that. for a completely different reason, though. Casual sex is just because casual you don't care what. Well, I mean, some people still care what they if they. Because you don't care about the, if they're came you're, or whatever? You're, exactly, because you're yeah. not going to see that well, person. But what if I want to be the champ? Like, uh, I want to be like known as the champ. Remarkable. That, that comes from your background. <laughs> it's just, a, it's just an ego thing. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. All right, cool. So then we're going to start with questions. You want me to lead or you want to lead? Uh, I want you to lead. I want to see what you're going to ask first. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm going to start with the, the number one question that, I, that people have asked. <laughs> and, and people were telling me, they're like, keep me anonymous, bro. Keep me anonymous. One, <laughs> of, them, one of them was... Um, so why do some men last longer than others? And in this case, how can a man then last longer? All right. So what would fi- make you finish quicker? So there's there's three things that could cause you to have premature ejaculation, right? Either performance anxiety. And that's usually because it could be either because you're scared, you're nervous about this, what you're going into. Mm-hmm. With that person, with the new partner. And you just think that like you overthink about the what's exactly. going to happen. Another thing that can, you know, when we're stressed out, um, uh, money difficulties, marriage issues, all those put you in fight or flight. And fight uh-huh. or flight So, is your sympathetic nervous system. So your parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for your erection. Sympathetic, yeah. ner- sympathetic nervous system is responsible for ejaculation. So if you're stressed out, which is fight or flight, sympathetic nervous mm-hmm. system, if you're stressed out for any reason and you do achieve an erection, you're going to have premature ejaculation. Or not, if you're an older guy, you'll end up with ED mm. just from being stressed out. But like it's over time or just... No, no, no. Like so it depends. It depends how stressed out, stressed out you are. Because the sympathetic nervous system, like I said, is responsible for ejaculation oh. and relaxation. So parasympathetic nervous system gets your penis hard. Sympathetic nervous system is ejaculation and relaxation. So that's why anxiety, marital difficulties, financial difficulties, etc. Anything that stresses you out can cause ED or premature ejaculation. Okay. Another thing that causes premature ejaculation, uh, and that's the reason why performance anxiety causes mm-hmm. it. Okay. Because okay. you're stressed out, you're in fight or flight, it, you know, you're nervous, you make sure you get that erection, that by the time you're in there, you're done. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, and the third thing would be, and I'm no saint, and I'm pretty sure none of us are, but excessive use of porn. What? Interesting. I've heard of that. I'll tell you why. So our brain is instinctively designed to take the easy way out. And like I said on the clip, it's a lot easier to sit in front of a computer screen and masturbate than it is to seduce somebody, take them home, and have sex with them. Mm-hmm. So... Our brain takes that route. So you become lazy, almost like programmed in a way? Yeah, and then when you become programmed like that, I don't know if you noticed, but sometimes when you masturbate, you c- especially women, when they masturbate, you come a lot quicker than you do when you have sex with, with a, your, your girlfriend or not. And what happens is your body gets used to that time. Hmm. Interesting. And you're done. Yeah, but it's, it, but I feel like it's a completely different, you know, s- stimulation. Because one is just like a hand. The other one is, you know, you have the real thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but you, you're so used to doing it on, a, on yeah, a computer. Yeah. Psychologically. You Psycho- have a, psychologically. That when you do have the real thing. It's like you don't. Mean, one, yeah. You don't know how to act. And you're done. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So stop the porn. S- stop. And, stop the porn. Well, stop watching it. Yeah. Or limited. I, say, I mean, if you want to last me. longer, watch more porn. No, no, no it, it would be the opposite. So like, don't, don't watch, watch porn. porn. Be the opposite, Get don't rid watch of it. Porn. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, and it, it also also prevents ED. I treated a patient, twenty eight years old. His him, he had a the urologist did a bypass. They bypass the arteries that irrigate the penis to his gastric arteries for no reason. When I sat down with this guy, and he had ED, twenty eight years old. I sat down with this guy and I'm talking to him. He's like, so what's the problem? He's like, no, I have ED. I was like, so what's the problem? He's like, well, when I'm jerking off, when I'm masturbating, I get an erection. My problem is with my girlfriend. Mm. And basically this guy 
didn't have a circulation issue. He had an addiction to pornography. Period. So it's more mentally than actually like physiology. Phys- yeah. Yeah, yeah. He felt probably he felt I don't know. God knows what what was in his brain, but probably he felt like he couldn't live up to what he was seeing oh, in yeah. the porn. Okay. Or a comparative thing. It's like a, like yeah, it's performance it's a, anxiety. You know, I'm so used to doing it with this. Now I got the real thing. How am I going to perform? Yeah. I'm done. So with a guy like that, how would you treat that? I mean, in that I, case, well, how, did, did, you, how treat, did you? How did you? I treated. Yeah. I did six shockwave treatments, and I did a pee shot and worked on his sensitivity and told him to his face what his problem was. That's the biggest thing. Most of these guys... See, like in denial, maybe? No, what happens is... To us guys, our brain is our number one en- enemy. Usually when we have an issue, it's a snowball. We're not as strong as women when it comes to these things. Really? So let's say for, for some reason, you fail one time in the bedroom. Oh, now yeah. this, look, look, look at your reaction. I can see yeah, that. Yeah. I can see that, yeah. That would destroy you. Yeah, you yeah. would snowball into... It's so always going to be in the back of your head, like, oh, like what if it happens again? Exactly. You know? like, then you sabotage exactly. yourself before That's even... That's called performance anxiety. Yeah. Ah, uh, interesting. So, and it could have been whiskey dick. It could have been, yeah, it could have been something as simple and as then, that. And then you're in your head like, oh shit, I'm 28, 30. I have ED. Oh no, how could this happen to me? What if I bring a, what if I bring a girl home tomorrow and I can't it, perform? It's going to happen again. Shit. Yeah. And okay, it gets interesting. Snowball. So, we, funny that you mentioned whiskey dick. So, how come that... Some people they they get whiskey dick and then others they drink and it's like they yeah they like, go for yeah rounds. so I've heard people that they'll drink and then so, man someone at work today drove me crazy he was like giving me some scientific like oh because then the the blood is thinner and this and I'm just like bro oh, shut up <laughs> just just give me the questions so I can ask the guy <laughs> um and so yeah but he he brought up a point so some people will drink and then they can't get an erection and then people do drink and they can last for two hours and they can't bust so so what happens is alcohol blocks certain receptor uh, blocks yeah. So, well, it blocks sort of s- some um, cytokines or hormones wow. in your brain that activate the parasympathetic nervous system, right? Mm-hmm. Which is responsible for an erection. This happens and puts you more into a sympathetic type aspect, you know, chill, relaxed. So what happens is if you have no issues achieving an erection when you're drunk, then you'll last forever because... There's no stimulation to make you ejaculate. Oh, it's like you're already up and like that's it. You okay. can, some people don't. They, they, they just function normally mm-hmm. and they come when they're supposed to come and they're done. But some guys, you know, when they do drink and if they do achieve an erection, they're blocked off. So there's no stimulus to go into sympathetic mode and make you ejaculate. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Right? But it all depends on blood circulation, really. You know, if you can achieve the erection, then don't worry about it. <laughs> but if you can't, there's really no way around it except don't drink as much. Yeah, exactly. Right? There's you nothing know, you can or do. Or you, you can do something dangerous like pop yeah, uh, yeah, like a, like a, a bag or Cialis, <laughs> which is dangerous. Yeah, yeah. It, especially when you're drinking. When yeah, you're exactly. drunk. And, you know. When you drink, your blood pressure goes down and this medication will lower your blood pressure even more. Shoot. That's so how like people get heart attacks and they like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Okay. So Viagra, these medications, PD five inhibitors, were originally designed to be anti hypertensive drugs because they open up your blood vessels. That's all they do. Interesting. Okay. So, then, so in the, w- with ED, because I mean, you you keep tying in questions, so I mean, it's yeah. hard to like you know stop and, and ask. It, but good, we can go back and forth. No, but you're going yeah. over all of them. Yeah. yeah so you good. say ED. So then when it comes to erectile dysfunction, you would say, I mean, shockwave therapy would be. That's the golden standard, man. I think that's the way to go before you ever try to get an implant in your penis. Yeah, I've that's, seen people that's another that's thing, thing that yeah. people can do. Yeah, man. I've seen this thing. It was like a silicone type of thing that they just. Oh, that's a penuma. That's to make it bigger. I heard, yeah, someone. I heard it on the radio. I think it was. That they penuma. Were it's about. basically a tit job for your dick. I heard that. Yeah, it's like a so silicone kind of works. like. Oh. I, I imagine when you're younger, it's great, but when you get older. You have to lift up, up that extra weight, <laughs> and nobody's yes. gonna make it really bigger than what it is. It's gonna give you volume. Right. And what they do is they cut your suspensory ligament, which which makes your erection drop down about an inch, so you look bigger. But it's the same dick you've always had. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow. it, it's almost like you're always a shower then instead of a grower. Exactly. You drop your pants; it's already like but ready then, to rock and roll. The problem is that ligament they cut is what gives you a steady erection. So after you cut that ligament, it's just a floppy erection. Oh, 
What do so, you want that? But then That's it's cool. like always. Wait, you look bigger. Okay. So ah. Image, whatever. Okay. But other than that, so when it comes I do to a lot of tricks to to guys to to make them look bigger, like, like help them, help them. Look okay. Bigger. So like, if you had to tell a guy how to, I mean, randomly, just how would you how would you tell someone? How would you assess it for our uh, viewers? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Why are you taking notes? Yeah, asking. <laughs> no. Nah, so so usually one of the things I do is, um, you know, Clybella. Have you heard of Clybella? No. Clybella is this um, injections that they use under the uh-huh. the, the chin. Yeah. For like the turkey neck. Well, like it burns off the... The fat. Okay. So what I do is I'll do that in the pubic area. And I'll oh. get rid of the fat. And So like it kind of pulls back the skin. There's more, yeah. more penises. More penis shows. More base. Exactly. Cool. Interesting. So one of the, if you don't have the money for that, so Sounds an painful. advice would be work out, lose weight, get rid of that extra fat on your pubic area. Your penis will look bigger. Hmm. And one of the things that you said earlier, so when it came to um, the whole porn thing, um, so is masturbation overall healthy or because I so mean, porn is. is one thing to see and then you think, OK, like I can't do this. So you get the anxiety, but like masturbation, without, okay. without, yeah, without porn. how does it go okay. hand in hand? Then? Why? Why does porn and masturbation go? No, because for yeah. example, like if someone were to watch porn, obviously, I mean, mostly you, I would say it's you, for people to, to masturbate, right? but you can masturbate without watching porn. So you, the right so you just right think there. it's the so it's just the porn, even though wh- whether the well, masturbate you, or not. You could watch porn to masturbate. That's fine. It's when you do it excessively to watch that, porn and masturbate just to porn. So both. Yeah. Tie, okay. Okay. Yeah. If you can't sit down right now in a private room when you're home and masturbate on your thoughts, memories of past experiences, etc., whatever it is you want to think about, but with no visual stimuli, just you and your brain in your hand. If you can't do that, then, you know, you should. Yeah, there's something. There's an issue there. There's All something right. there. Gotcha. Yeah, you because, should be able to. Yeah, because I I mean, I know people that they're like virtually addicted to porn where it's like they have to watch it every day, multiple times or a day. The, or they have to watch it every time they masturbate. Yeah. They can't do it on their own. Okay. And then that's where like the problem is. There's an issue there. Okay. If you can't turn yourself on thinking about stuff that turns you on and then be able to masturbate on your own with no help. And there's an issue. And how would you resolve that issue? Can you? They, just that's the same thing. That would be the same thing. Let's say you were the girl, then you would need more visual stimuli to get you where you want right, to right, be. Right, right, right. And so let's say you guys listening, they're having this problem. What's the best way to kind of get, like, just stop the porn? It would so start reducing it. Just uh, like in any addiction, start cutting back. Okay. It's not, it's not wrong to watch porn. There's nothing right, right. bad with it. You know, it's actually an aid. And it helps you out if you you have nothing else, right? Right, right, right. But it shouldn't be the another base. way of the, yeah, the main factor. And the problem yeah. is that nowadays, when when I was younger, for example, um, the the access to pornography is different. Limited. I would have to steal a tape from my dad, or mm-hmm. you know, or like get a nudie mag. Uh, yeah, go to a gasoline station, buy a nudie mag or something. Yeah. And then it was that mag was for me and all my friends. You know, we would share it. Yeah, pass it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand me down. Right now, the kid could go into the bathroom. Spend two hours on his phone watching all the porn he wants. All kinds of shit. Yeah, and yeah. if he wants to see a midget with a bat, and he'll find it, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Everything is accessible, yeah. Okay, how about this? Um, so then G-spots. Oh. So then there's oh. a guy G-spot, there's a girl G-spot. Um, for women, it would be... I know that there's yeah. something inside that they say... So that the like the G-spot is called the Grafenberg spot. Supposedly, it was first described in the 1900s, the 1940s. Um, so the Grafenberg spot supposedly is a point in the anterior vaginal wall that is, has a bundle of nerves and that gives the female ex- extra pleasure, right? What I personally think it is because there's nothing described or shown anatomy wise, right? Mm-hmm. So it's in the anterior vaginal wall. What it is, is the internal per- portion of the clitoris, right? And that's what's giving that extra stimuli because of the location. I Okay, that makes sense. Right? That makes sense. And so there's a shot that I do called the O-shot, which is PRP, and I put it right in the anterior vaginal wall. And basically, it creates like a little knot that when you have intercourse, that knot is constantly stimulating. Oh. So it gives more pleasure? Yeah. And like it hits against the... Yeah, it's crazy for them. Really? Yeah. And it actually helps with urinary incontinence, so for females, so, which is a big problem, believe it or not. 
What is it? I'm sorry. Urinary incontinence. Like they have, um, especially if they already had um, babies, um, they have a hard time controlling the urine. If they oh, sneeze okay. or laugh or run at the gym. So, so it happens pretty young too. So I got you. And so, so how come for some women I feel like it's it's, it's harder to to have to hit that G spot? Is that a fact? So so yeah yeah, and it's true. It, it, uh, it just depends on the body on, right? on, on, on anatomy, right? And and the way the shape of of her vagina mm -hmm. and internal canal in terms of her anterior vaginal wall on how it gets stimulated when you when she's penetrated. Okay. Yeah, but but okay, but, but so then when, when women that they complain that it's like oh a guy he he either can't find the clit or he can't he doesn't know how to rub on the so, clit. So we're talking two different things. We're talking about the clitoris. Well, uh, the but, so this is both. So so I'm I'm trying to go into to both for for a woman to to reach climax. In this uh, case. Okay. So there is a G spot, and then so then the clitoris is is separate. Obviously, it's right in front. Right, right, right. right. Okay. So can you see. I don't know. We'll figure it out. No, you start no, po start pointing see. at things. I'm pretty sure that's a so vagina. So basically, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, so the clitoris is right there, right in, on the top. Yeah, in the midline on the top, you have the clitoral hood, labia majora, which are the, the what gives them the camel toe, right? Right, 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 right. Labia minora, the lips inside, mm -hmm. and then in either side of the ure urethra are the two little holes that you can't see with your eyes, but those are called those are the skin glands. The skin glands are also known as the female prostate. What they do is they re lubricate the vagina on climax. Now, those glands right there, if they're hyper-stimulated or overgrown for any other reason, for any reason on a female, those are the glands that might give a little squirt. Ah, okay. Okay, it looks like if it's urine because both... So the glands are on either side of the urethra. Mm, it shouldn't it's right come there, it, but it shouldn't come from the urethra. If it comes from the urethra, she's peeing on you, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, and, and then every every woman does this. Yeah, I was gonna ask. Every woman has those glands. So technically, they can all do it. Yeah, but some are more exactly. Easy. Some some are more projectile, ah. right? Like the so that happens on 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 climax, right? When they have the <laughs> orgasm. Uh -huh. Okay. okay. Right. So, is there ways that you can uh, stimulate that so they do you know, squirt? So it happens when when they when basically they have an orgasm. So okay. one way to 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 stimulate it would be the same way you would stimulate the G spot would be in the anterior vaginal wall, pushing forward somehow, and then it could, might compress the glands okay. and make it basically you're like I don't know squeezing a little bottle. Okay, okay, I got the, I got the picture. So you're speaking of G spot, why do we have it in our ass? <laughs> Supposedly, oh, man. so it has it that the it's reason in our ass. Okay, so the reason why those who like their ass stimulated <laughs> um, <laughs> say they have the G spot at the ass. The what happens is, so if you if you were to check yourself, right, us guys, right where our testicles end, you follow it a little bit lower. And there's a drop off before your butthole, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right behind. That's the gooch. Bro, right where that drop off is, on the taint, and you know. And ah, you know, okay, 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 okay. Right where that drop off is, right back there, is where your prostate is. Ah, okay? okay. So what happens is the prostate has a lot to do, has a ton of nerves, and not only that, it's what re lubricates or cleans out all our, us guys. Or urethra before we ejaculate. Basically, it makes it slippery. It's not like the pre cum. Exactly, it oh. makes it slip. That comes from your prostate. Oh. So what it does is it makes it slippery for when you do come, the sperm could just <laughs> okay projectile. Right, yeah. <laughs> that's the word of the evening. <laughs> so, so what happens is so why is that? Yeah, why is the stimulation there? Because supposedly? that's the only access you have to it. So that's why it's like the only way to, to actually get touch, touch it. I touch guess. the prostate. Oh, so it's, it. it's going in upwards and you touch the prostate. So there's more. Yeah. I got that's access. why the doctor, when they're checking your prostate, they go in your ass because that's the only way to get <laughs> yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I also access. heard that, but, but like now to check your prostate, supposedly they, they could take blood. They could take oh. blood, but if the PSA, the PSA, which is what you check in the blood, 
only tells you what your prostate levels are. So mm -hmm. if they're a little bit elevated, you still need you would still need to think of see it. if it's swelling or exactly. Ooh, okay. interesting. And there's a bunch of nerve endings at, around your anus. Right. <laughs> okay. So, th you know, that could be stimulating. Yeah, because like, when they eat your ass, they, you, you have your ass eaten? I, I have, yes. Have, have you, you ever had your ass eaten? Yes, sir. Okay. I've had yeah. it eaten. Uh, was it? Luch, have you had your ass eaten? <laughs> he's he's no, saying yes. Just. He's not on the camera, but he's saying yes. <laughs> and I'm, he's saying I'm kidding, no. I'm kidding. I'm man, kidding. I think no, it, man, it, it's it, an interesting it, feeling, though. It, it's a, yeah, no, it, no, we got to be honest. And, yeah, I yeah, bet yeah, you, and I bet you you all said the same thing. You better not tell nobody. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's kind of like taboo, right? Uh, Listen, is it? again, again, again. We're going back again, to what your dad said. To, <laughs> to, dude, what happens between a man and a woman in a closed room is their business. I like that. That's a slogan I put on my, on my and then, <laughs> You know, it's, oh, am I gay? Because she did this? No, it wasn't a guy doing it. Do you want a guy to do it? No, <laughs> it was your chick doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. That's your problem. <laughs> so then what if, what if the chick were like, what what if she's like oh okay yeah I, I want to use toys and stuff like that and then she put, she wears a strap on that's up to you bro <laughs> <laughs> it's like, not the if kind that's of toys what floats I want. your boat man <laughs> have a nice day <laughs> <laughs> you bite that red ball oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the gag ball <laughs> all right let me see what else we um mean. well I guess like the toys I mean for obviously incorporating that into the bedroom could definitely help it, especially for I mean obviously on women it depends on your relationship and your communication. Right. That's why if you have an open relationship, and I don't mean open with other sexual other people, partners, like, which is your business, by the way, right. if that's what you want to do, I mean open in the sense that if you're open enough to talk to you, to your partner about what you like, what you don't like, what you're willing to do, what you want to do, what you've thought of doing, then nothing can surprise you. You know? Right. Do you think that she like, knows what to expect from you? You know what to expect from her. And that's how you keep the relationship going. Yeah, that communication. Do you think that, like, you know, including, like, uh, so, you know, obviously, people, most people, I would say they just have the regular sex. Like, you know, they're in the room, whatever, boom, go to bed or whatever. <laughs> but so then people, they, they you know, they'll they'll put threesomes in, into the mix. They'll, they'll throw toys into the mix. They'll role play. Do you think that that's because there's a lack of some sort of intimacy or do you think that's them exploring for them to make it even better? Or do you, like, you know, so you, so you, know you can't judge. It's the reason why they're doing it because you don't you know don't you don't think so it's about sex it's just about like their exactly or, or what, what no what's the reason for doing it so if they're doing it because they're both uh, they both agree that they wanted to try this because it was both of their fantasies to do these things then fine if one of them brought it up because he's bored and let's do this to spice it up then that could be dangerous that's but, the but direction I wanted to go. Yeah, in. but if you've been dating, for, if you've been together for such a long time, at some point, certain things become somewhat redundant. Only if you, you let, only if you let it be. Really? Because yeah. what what can you do with a different person that you wouldn't be doing with your partner? No, I'm not saying a different person. That's what I'm saying. Spice things up, oh, role yeah. play. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so, you know, so, just, so, especially so if you've been together for like years I, and like years. Like I said, that's the reason why. The reason why you're doing this would be. Like what the motive is. What the motive the is. Motive. Okay. What's the if motive? If it's because, okay, we're daw, this shit sucks. Let's bring a third person in to see if we feel better. No, no, no. That's, yeah, maybe, that's yeah. going to mess up the rules. Right. Maybe not a third person, but like when you introduce toys. Oh, exactly. Or, or, yeah. or like yeah, handcuffs and all that type of stuff. Exactly. Like, no, yeah, that's completely, I think it's completely healthy, dude. Yeah. Cool, healthy. Right. I like that. Write that down. I know a bunch of people that are. That <laughs> you know, that, that the World them. Health Organization describes health as um, that health is not only the absence of disease and infirmity, but it's also the ability to create and maintain intimate relationships. Right. So without sex or a healthy sex life, you can't have health okay. in, in definition. So sex belongs in a relationship. Like it, 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 no, intimacy. Intim intim so intimacy. without you being able to create and maintain Intimate relationships, you cannot achieve health. And that wasn't me. That was the World Health Organization. Okay. Yeah, take the credit, man. Yeah, yeah you got it. Take so obviously sex is important, but is there a time where it is too much sex? That was my next Where question. You, you, some people have literally have an addiction to it. So where do you define that and differentiate between this is just a couple who are, or the person who's just sexually active and then there's... Well, there is, there is. There is issues like a sex addiction. Right, of course. That, that's a problem like any other problem like heroin addiction or... Any drug addiction, they would need to get therapy and taken care of, I guess. 
but if it's affecting their relationship. So well, if their partner's up for it, and so it's healthy. As long as more yeah. sex, the better. Well, it's, it's going yeah. to get to the point where it's not healthy. Anything, anything, and, and excessive. Any, My dad doesn't. Know yeah, that. but it's true. It's true because is anything you try a little bit won't. Especially my advice to even the younger guys that listen to you guys. Anything you do, you know, to try out to see what it's like, and you do it. It's okay, you know. You're gonna get if you're high as hell on whatever drug, it's gonna go away, right? Right. The excess is what kills you, literally, or it's the downfall, and that goes with everything else. Anything you do in excess is, can go from being good to being I mean, harmful. Is if is sugar there, tastes great if you eat three bags of cookies? Diabetes. Diabetes. Yeah. Right. Diabetes. Is there a way to put a number on that number, like amount of? The amounts of times you have sex where it's like, okay, this is becoming a problem? Or do you feel like it just depends on the... On the, and the it depends. Yeah. It's, it's, on how it's, your partner reciprocates. Yeah. Exactly. And it depends on if it causes issues in the relationship. Well, that was my next question. So, so that let's say, for example... I'm sorry to no, 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 Disorder. Yeah. All hypoactive right. sexual desire disorder, same thing. What happens to it's women's lack, ongoing lack in interest in sex to the point where it causes her emotional and physical distress and problems in her relationship. So it doesn't it's okay. Basically, if you go off that definition, it's okay for her not to have interest in sex, but once it bothers her mm. or her relationship, then it's a problem. So you can apply that same reasoning because this is medical reasoning, not my reasoning. Of course. I think sure. it's retarded. <laughs> but if you apply that same reasoning to, let's say, sexual addiction, so then it would be, it would only be called the problem if it causes him um, distress or his, his, par his partner. partner. Okay. Is there, what, what, ha what would happen if, let's say, you date somebody and they're, some people are more sexually active or, or, or they have they crave sex more than others. So what if you're dating somebody so who you're not even on this really as com compatible on the same level? So yeah. that would that would maybe that person never saw it as a problem. Okay. Either or the one that had hypoactive sexual desire or the one that is hyperactive. So or maybe they're both normal and one is just on another level than the other. That's why the communication is is super important. Can that be a deal breaker when one person just wants sex all the time? And the other person's like, I it, don't need sex. It often. most likely will down the line, maybe down the line, ruin a relationship. Okay. We we always fall back on sex when during a relationship, you know. Sure. Do you think that so somebody asked you on the live? They're like, let me see if it's still there. Um, does he believe that you need sex for intimacy? Then what about sexual asexual people? Asexual. No, no, I agree. So sex is not intimacy, and intimacy is not sex. I, right. I'm fully aware of that. What happens is, what happens is that, according to the World Health Organization, that's why I said it wasn't me. You cannot achieve complete health unless you you're able to create and maintain intimate and sexual relationships. That's all I said. Okay. All right. I know they're not one and all, but it, it it's important. And um, you could be as internal and as subconscious as you want with uh, being asexual, but down the line, it's going to get to the point where you're going to need some stimulus. And reiterating on on you know how much sex is too much sex. So what about partners? Does it matter how many? As long as you you know you protect yourself and you that's what I'm saying. It, it doesn't really matter. Maybe better experience, but at the end of the day, what one person likes is not what the other likes. So you could have had a ton of partners and run into the person that matches what you like, right. or doesn't, <laughs> and and you think that you're the pro and you because you made all these the champ, you, the, the champ like because right. you made maybe ten percent of the eighty chicks you were with come in generous with him. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so. So okay. my question to the viewers would be, what percentage of women fake orgasms? I have the answer, but... What, okay, I have another question for you. No, question. you're not going to What ask. percentage of women fake orgasms? So 
We had we. I'll we tell you this. this. I'll once. tell you this. Well, I'll tell you this. Sheep. Percentage? Four. Oh, I did a video oh, on it. How many girls? So you missed the video. It was in Spanish, though. I think. I mean, I've been following you for a while, but you know, maybe uh, there's one that I missed. Uh, okay, so so basically, fourteen percent. I did see this one. Eighty. So eighty-seven percent of men said that their partner had had an orgasm <laughs> in their last um, relationship. Sexual. In their last sexual, sexual activity, encounter. sexual encounter. Only fifteen percent of the women said that they had had an orgasm. In their last sexual encounter, so but like, why do women fake? Like, why would well, you lie maybe about she that? She doesn't fake it because she well, some fake it, right? Well, but, but maybe um, she wants to make, make him feel good, make you feel good, uh, caress your ego a little bit because maybe she has come with you before, okay. and it didn't happen that time. Maybe she was but close. It, yeah. So she's but, just caressing your ego. But but so, like, it's a, yeah. Or 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 maybe she's always had that problem. And she can't come because she has an atrophic clitoris or some other problem. That does, and all she's known how to do is fake it, and she's never could. Yeah, but if you don't have that dialogue, if you don't, then how can you change? Well, it comes with the communication. It comes you know? with the communication. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, but a good example, and she's probably watching. She'll hate me saying it. For example, you know my. But I, I'll ask my wife, and she's like, nope, not this time. I'll, like, I'll catch you next time. You know? <laughs> but it happens, you know. One day, either women do it for guys all the time, which they shouldn't. And I tell, I've told my wife, they, they'll, they'll, they'll let us have intercourse when they really don't want to, especially if you've been in a relationship for a long ass time. Oh, wow. interesting. You know, you're you, right, you're right. you get home from work, and you're like, oh, come on. She's like, no, no. And you're like, come on, come on. And she's like, okay. And then because she, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have a question here. So with that being said, I believe this was when in the, I think it was the amount of sex probably. So with that being said, when should someone point out to their partner that the amount of sex they want is unattainable for them? How should you approach that conversation with your partner? You should, especially if you're already thinking about saying that is they need to address it because it's bothering her. That's, she's aware of it. So yeah, that's it's, why it's already a problem. It's already a problem. So you definitely should. The way to approach it is, hey, we got to sit down and have a talk about this. Just be open, it, yeah. If you want to continue with me, then, you know, this is, we can't, we got to meet, meet somewhere in the middle. So funny that you say that because I was in a relationship once a while ago and I wanted to have sex more than the other person. And this other person, she was never in the mood. It turns out with the birth control that she was taking kind of like killed her sex sorry, killed her sex drive. I agree. So yeah, so that can happen too. So she yeah. switched it up. It's and a then, hormonal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then so that can, sometimes can also be an issue. And bring your libido right back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. So but you gotta have that talk in order to kind of address that. You know? yeah, exactly. So going exactly. back. Okay. Another issue I wanted to point out is that the women's sexual response is different than guys. Us guys were simple, right? It's more linear than anything, you know. It's so a we get, we have the desire you have excitement, you're erect, you have orgasm and resolution. We usually end up with a sandwich, right? <laughs> um, women, it's a little bit more difficult. Desire has a lot to do with excitement and, sedu and seduction. Excitement has to do with sensations and past experiences. Um, orgasm has to do with surrender. So women really don't know that, but they got to let go mm -hmm. to be able to actually reach climax. climax. So, and it, and just pointing that out actually helps. So if they don't trust the guy they're with, it, you know, I understand. Maybe they're it, not comfortable. That's if you're there in a relationship. It's a one night stand. They know how to let themselves go because it's somebody you are never going to see again. Okay. But if it's their partner, it's a little bit harder to let go if you're messing up, if she doesn't trust you, if whatever. That's so that surrender actually in, um, aspect actually impedes from her reaching from reaching orgasm and then and then her resolution us as a sandwich for her is you know reflection was this the right choice did i really need to sleep with this guy right. oh my god uh, was, yeah uh, so they overthink something or I mean, not overthink for them but but that is, that's part of the sexual response i didn't make that shit up you know <laughs> I it, wish it, it is what it is i'm not that smart you know <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have one yeah. final question that was asked. I don't know how many you have left, but we're almost running out of time. Yeah. Um. So people said vaginal sex to anal sex, good idea, bad idea, and when it comes to cleanliness and hygiene, it should be avoided. I don't. I don't recommend it unless you know you're using protection and you switch off condoms yeah, or whatnot. 
Yeah, so, as long as you don't mix the yeah, you're yeah better off. exactly, exactly. You shouldn't double dip. Right. I think uh, we're almost out of time. But yeah. do you have any questions for us? Maybe no, man. I'm glad you yeah, guys yeah, had yeah. Me, had me here. I was really happy to be. It here. was a pleasure. All yeah. right, so set yourself to that camera real quick. Final thoughts. What do you have to say to people that are watching when it comes to sex, health, relationships, whatever you want? Final thoughts. Go sell yourself. Definitely have more sex. Have more fun. If you have issues with that. Let me know and I can help you. Throw some Spanish <laughs> in there. Go. Sell, sell it in Spanish too. ¿Qué, qué, qué quiere que le diga? Lo mismo que tú dijiste. Ah, bueno, mira. Si tienes problemas, si tienes dudas, déjame saber y yo te ayudo. Todo sexual, métele mano, que eso pasa. Métele mano. Well, All that right. was a pleasure. It was really, really Bro, fun. It was fun you. being here, man. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you You're so much. You're a busy man, but you made time. You made the and time. It means a lot. I think this is going to be one of, our, one of our favorite episodes. Very educational. A lot of people are going to learn from this. And then Let's promote the shit out of it. No, we will. It's going to take, some time. Yeah. Gonna take yeah. some time. We have, we have a couple of episodes lined up, but this one's going to be, I think, one of the hot ones. So, as we close off, it's time to break up. Right? So <laughs> uh, bro, do I don't want to see you anymore. That's, yeah, the, that's, the, that's, that's the, the thing. Deuces. Low battery over here. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think all the questions have been answered. Yes. So, oh, well, yeah, my bad. I was on low battery, but we're good now. So, thank, thank you, you everybody. Well, you say it. Yeah, thank you for tuning in, for supporting us, and and you know, tuning in to the live. If you have any questions, let us know. Let Chris know. Let me know. Let let us know. And as always, we really appreciate the support that you guys give us. So once again, thank you very much. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube, you know, like, subscribe, ring the bell, comment, all that good stuff. If you're on the go, you're probably listening to us on Spotify and iTunes. Remember, you can watch us. If you want to see our reactions, see who the hell we're talking to, you can always go back to YouTube. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Mm -hmm. We got the Miami Love Doctor. We're going to put his stuff on the bottom so you guys can check him out too. At Miami Love Doctor. Check him out on Instagram. And then you can find all the goods from him. Uh, create the engagement. Comment on us. Write to us. DM Give us, us feedback. Us. Yeah. Let us know what we're doing right, what we could do better. And I believe... Time to... That's it. Hard. Wait. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, guys.